followed by one prolonged blast on the whistle. If you hear this signal, please make your way to the life jacket assembly points following the assembly station direction signs displayed. The crew will be on hand to give instructions and advice. Please note that smoking, including the use of e-cigarettes, is not permitted on any part of the vessel. And for your own safety, we also ask you not to stand on the seats or sit on the ship's rails. We ask cyclists to alight after all foot passengers have left the vessel. And could all school parties please make themselves known to a member of the deck crew. Please be aware that at low tide, the link span passenger bridges will be at a steep angle. This time of day is called low water. You may have difficulty if you have reduced mobility, so please ask for help if required and take care. Photography and filming may take place during this cruise and may be used for the purpose of promoting Mersey Ferries online, in print and on social media. Please remember that you must wear a face covering and respect social distancing during the cruise. Side, you can see the tall, slim spire of St. Mary's Church, which marks the site of the old Birkenhead Priory, where the very first ferry service began. In front of the church is a slipway built in 1840 called Monk's Ferry, and this is the spot where the monks would begin the mile-long journey across to Liverpool. On the other side of the slipway are the dry docks and slipways of Camel Laird, famous for building many great ships, such as the Ark Royal, the second Mauritania, and even some of the Mersey ferries. The first ship built was launched in 1829, and over 1,300 ships have been built here. The construction hall, as you can see, is one of the largest in Europe, and in recent years has seen a number of major fabrication projects, including the building of the flight decks for the new HMS Queen Elizabeth aircraft carrier. In January 2021, Camelot secured a four-year contract with Calmac, one of the UK's largest ferry operators, for the annual maintenance and dry docking of the five largest vessels in its fleet. Each vessel will dock at Camelot each year. In April 2014, the British government authorised the procurement by the British Antarctic Survey of a Royal Research Ship at an estimated cost of £200 million. In 2015, Camelot won the construction contract and it was the largest commercial shipbuilding project in the country in 30 years. Commissioned by the Natural Environment Research Council and operated by British Antarctic Survey, the new Polish ship, the RRS Sir David Attenborough, will transform UK research in the polar regions, providing scientists with state-of-the-art facilities to research the oceans, seafloor, ice and atmosphere. Its missions are critical for understanding and making sense of our changing climate.
We're now passing Tramia Beach, which is where many great ships came to be broken up, including the Great Eastern, designed by Isambard Kingdom Brunel, and one of the biggest ships ever to be built. She carried over 3,000 passengers in luxury, as well as 6,000 tons of cargo. She had an amazing history. She laid the first Atlantic telephone cable, killed her first captain, and had four mutinies. She had five funnels, and her six masts were named after the days of the week, Monday to Saturday. The fourth mast, Thursday, became the flagpole of the football club at Anthony. Even as she was being broken up, she held a surprise. The skeleton of a worker was found who must have been trapped in her hull when she was being built. The long piers with the big gantry cranes on the river are part of the Tramia Water which can handle tankers weighing up to 300,000 tons. Thank you. 